Five must-know JavaScript DOM methods. The closest method allows you to begin from an element. You can then pass in a selector and it's gonna go up the DOM tree and find the first parent or the closest parent that matches the selector that you passed in. All right, so as an example here, I've got this HTML table. Now, when I click on one of these buttons, I wanna know which table row that I've actually clicked on. So starting from this button and going up and finding the parent table row element. All right, so going back inside VS Code here, we can see I've got this event listener on every single button. So when clicking on a button, just gonna say console.log here and then simply log out uh, button.closest, right? So passing into closest here, we can say something like TR. So you can pass in any sort of selector here, much like CSS and figure out which is the closest that matches that selector. So go back in the browser, do a refresh here, click on a button and we get the table row for that particular button right there. If I click on the third one, this one here is going to be the third table row. So like I mentioned, you can pass in classes here, something like this. You can pass in IDs, you can pass in whatever you want, much like CSS, and of course get that closest parent. So very handy when it comes to event listeners and finding out where you are. The append method works much like append child where you can append things to existing HTML elements or containers, but this one here is gonna allow you to append multiple things to an existing element. And also you can append just plain text. So right here, we've got this container, which I fetched from the document, it already existed. I've also created a new button just like this called btn to append. So down here, I'll say some container dot append, and then we can pass in here the btn to append to of course append that button to the container. Now, we can also say comma and add as many things as we want, including including text. So right here, I'll now say uh, something like this is a button. So now we're going to see a button and also some text near it on the HTML page. Now, keep in mind that this right here is not going to work for HTML. So if you were to say something like a new paragraph tag here, this right here is going to be outputted as per normal in plain text and not actually be parsed as HTML. So that is your append method to append multiple things to an existing element. The insert adjacent HTML method is gonna allow you to insert some HTML string relative to another HTML element, okay? So I've got the same container method from earlier on, but this time I'm gonna say some container dot insert adjacent HTML. And now we're gonna pass in two arguments here. The first one is gonna be the position. So this is all relative to the container. Uh, we have firstly here after begin. So if you choose after begin, it's gonna insert the HTML as the first child of the container. After end is gonna be inserting it after the container finishes. So basically as the next sibling to the container. The before begin is gonna be inserting before the container. So the previous sibling and the before end works just like the append where we're gonna be inserting it as the last child, all right? So I'm gonna choose after begin here. Then of course, pass in next some HTML, much like using inner HTML. So an HTML string, I can say something like a new paragraph tag here, and I can say something like my paragraph, okay? So now, of course, we would uh, we would now see uh, this paragraph tag inserted as the first child of the container. Now, we've also got a couple of uh, more methods here that work in a similar fashion. So, of course, we've also got insert adjacent element, which is going to allow you to pass in, instead of an HTML string, an actual element object. And, of course, insert adjacent text, which, once again, works the same way, but this time, you're going to be passing in some text as opposed to HTML, much like text content.
the matches method is going to let you know if an element matches the selector string that you pass in. All right, so this right here is perfect for event listeners because it's going to let you know, uh, you know, things about the element which the user interacted with or clicked on and so on. All right, so right here I have this button. Now I can say something like, uh, you know, console.log uh, my button, then say dot matches. And now we can pass in a selector string like CSS, like I showed you earlier with the closest method. So we can say something like button just like this. And now of course, if this element is a button, it's gonna return it true. I can also pass in things like classes, for example, is dash active to figure out if you clicked on an active button, whatever you guys want to use it for, you can pass in a CSS selector string here and of course get a true or false response. So perfect for figuring out what the user interacted with. The replace with method is going to essentially replace the element that you caught it on with a new list of either elements or strings of text. Okay, so as an example right here on this HTML, I've got this paragraph. Now, we're going to be replacing this paragraph here with something else. So. Back inside the code, I have a newly created button and I've added some text to this button. So let's go down here and we're going to say my paragraph dot replace with and then pass in here the button. So now we're going to see the paragraph be replaced with the button. So this paragraph is going to be gone. We can also pass in multiple things here, including just like the append method text. So as an example, we can say here, this is a new button just like that. I can save this, go back in the browser, do a refresh here. And as we can see, the paragraph has been replaced with the button and some new text. So this here is going to be perfect for building user interfaces and of course just changing the place of certain things when new updates arrive or things of that nature. And that is all for today's video guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.